Hi, in this episode we begin to talk about our vapor barrier. It serves two main purposes, protect us from humidity and protect us from radon gas. So let's get into it. All right, so this episode is going to be pretty much 100% about the uh, Stego Industries uh, vapor uh, barrier. Uh, we ended up getting the 15 mil vapor barrier. We wanted to go a little bit higher than code requires, like code requires like uh, 10 mil. We went for the 15 mil. The price is pretty much the same anyway. Um, let me talk a little about the requirements of the slab because uh, I probably did not mention it on the previous episode. The slab is actually a raft slab. What that means is that it's uh, completely isolated from the main foundation. Um, and the way we're doing that, in the previous episode, you saw us put insulation under the slab. And now in this episode, you will also see us put uh, an expansion joint around the entire perimeter of the slab. In our case, it will be uh, insulation. And uh, that will completely disjoint the slab from the main foundation. And that's very, very important if you're a newbie because uh, time and time again, I, I went to the engineer and I said, how about we fix this problem by attaching it to the slab? And he said, no. How about we fix this other problem by attaching it to the slab? He said, no. It is very important that the slab is uh, disjointed because the foundation may move separately from the slab and that keeps the structure uh, in good condition. So yeah, if you're a newbie, just keep that in mind. So the first step for the vapor barrier was to cut the plastic to size. Now the second step is uh, using this uh, tape, it's called Stego Tac Tape. It's a double-sided um, tape, extremely sticky. So here's my pro tip, never ever remove these uh, paper covers because if you do, uh, the borders are going to stick everywhere. Now to install it, we're going to use it um, to, to attach the vapor barrier to the concrete wall. We have a four inch slab, so the top part of the tape, it's right at the four inch mark. We then attach the cover and we're going to cut the excess. We ran out of time over the weekend, but we really want to complete Stego this week. So we actually stayed the night, today is Tuesday morning, yesterday was a holiday. And we are drinking coffee and uh, drinking Red Bull to get some energy. And we're going to start working on Stego right now. We have about two hours because we actually have to go to work later today. So um, let's get into it. So now that the vapor barrier is uh, extended and attached to the concrete, 
Now the next step is going to be detailing. Now per manufacturer instu instructions, whenever you have an overlap, well, you need to have an overlap of at least six inches. Ours it's a bit longer. I think it comes all the way to here. And that's because we had excess material and we didn't want to spend time cutting it. So um, ours is here. And then the next step was adding a line of tape. I'm using this um, Stego tape and we just applied, you only need one line on the seam. Now in this case, what I noticed was that even though I rolled it, you should always roll the tape even if instructions don't say it, even though I roll it, it's kind of lifting in some areas where the plastic has some bubbles. And since we want protection from gas, it's pretty important to seal it. So I just went and I added a second, uh, a second line on, of tape on this specific joint. Um, okay, so that makes it for joints. Now let's talk about penetrations. So here I have one. Now for detailing the penetrations, I like to do this in three steps. So the first one is I cut little pieces of tape and I put them like this. So that's going to seal all this area where I have the gaps from how I cut the vapor barrier. The second step I do is I add a large piece of tape like this on each side. That's going to prevent all the small pieces from lifting. And the final one is I go with the tape just like that and I add a large piece of tape in here. And that's for corners. If you ever have an accident and you break the vapor barrier, if it's just a small cut, uh, if it isn't any plastic missing, you can just apply a patch as we did here. We had a tiny cut in here. So you can do that. And the final step is uh, the corners. So whenever you have the plastic meeting at the corner, you also need to put a tape in there. And that's how we do waterproofing. The last step in the Astego system is to put this uh, tape. Its name is a uh, Crete Claw. I don't know if you can see it has like this little metal inside. It's like um, Marcella calls it like duct tape with a microscopic rebar. I've mentioned before that concrete is actually kind of porous and it has like these little tentacles microscopically. So when the concrete gets poured, it will grab onto this uh, tiny rebar and it will prevent the vapor barrier from slipping under the uh, concrete over time. Uh, we still have a few uh, locations to put it on, like this uh, metal post. We still have to put a little bit of tape uh, around the perimeter insulation. But we are pretty much done with Stego, so then the next step is uh, uh, putting the concrete. So the uh, concrete guys came over where they put the rebar, 32 inch on center, uh, number four rebar for the slab. 
and uh, we've been uh, waiting and trying to get some tape, some final tape uh, taken care of, but it's been raining continuously, so today is the very first day we're allowed to do this. And uh, check this out, you're going to be, see that uh, wooden box, that's where the uh, shower will be. Uh, that box is because we're going to be dropping the, um, the slab there like an inch and a half, so that the uh, shower can fit and it can be um, curvous. favorite days during this construction process, it's concrete day again. So today we are putting the concrete for the, um, for the slab of the main house, of the mechanical room, also known as the tiny house, and the footings for the shed we are building in the back. So it's an exciting day. that that square right there, it's a little bit different from the rest. What's going on there is that we have a steam shower and we want it to be curveless. So we asked them to do the slab a little bit shorter. In that area, it's going to be two and a half inches versus the rest of the slab, which is four inches high. were pretty much done but there are two additional steps to make them even nicer so first I get on those boards that you see down there and that allows them to get into the concrete and, and start polishing and then they use some sort of skis um, to polish it even further so here we have some more detailing and this was an ask that I had and the crew is super nice and they accommodate my request so that is the top of the backwater valve box and it was covered with concrete and I asked them if they could make it a little bit nicer and look at that, they did an amazing job. Alright, so we're almost done. The final step is to apply the uh, Master Seal NP1. Uh, it is basically an acoustic sealant and we're going to be putting this inside the control joints of the concrete. So you might be able to see here some lines. The biggest advantage of this is that it doesn't actually cure. So when we apply it, it's just going to expand and contract with the joints. But what's the purpose of it? The purpose is so that we can control what's inside of those control joints. Uh, otherwise, if, you, if we just let it be, it's just going to get full with, of dirt, um, full of uh, water maybe. Ice will come in, co expand, contract, and crack it. Another thing about control joints, you might be able to see that we have these little predefined uh, squares. So typically, the rules for control joints is to to apply like squares no bigger than 10 to 12 feet so that you can better define how the concrete's gonna crack. You cannot guarantee how it's gonna work, if it's gonna crack one way or the other, but that's really the intention. So, so you might be able to see that I am now wearing a hat. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. And the reason is because it's basically almost two months from the time our uh, subs were able to finish the slab. And mostly the reason we did that is because we haven't, uh, we weren't able to put the acoustic sealant on the control joints. And that's because we got rain after rain after rain every single day and we could never put it until finally now we were able to finish. So anyway, to close up this episode, let me mention a few things. The concrete has, uh, on the slab has a, a, a fiber mesh to make it stronger. It's like those micro re uh, rebars that I've mentioned in some other episodes. Uh, also, one interesting, interesting thing is that uh, slab concrete is typically harder than a wall, uh, stem wall concrete. So that's something I found that's kind of interesting as well. You might be able to see here that we have a hole, a, a hole, and this is basically for the curveless shower that's going to be here. I find concrete like a super cool, interesting material because 
you might think of water and you pour it into a hole and you, you'd imagine like it'll just blow up everywhere, but concrete actually uh, clogs itself up and allows for these very nice features. So it's an incredible invention we've, we've made. Um, so yeah, that's what you, why you see this little hole for the curveless shower to gain a little bit more space. And then finally, let's talk about the Stego. Uh, you can see over here, we have, I don't know if you can see actually, we have cut the Stego to uh, size. Uh, you can also see a little bit of the insulation maybe. But over, over here, we haven't, actually, we haven't actually cut the Stego. We're going to cut this Stego to size as well, to be flush with the foundation. Um, also, I would say Stego is an amazing product as well. Uh, the tapes, the creed claw, all their two double-sided duct tapes are amazing. So I highly recommend that product as well. So with that said, we are pretty much done with this episode and let's move on to the next one.